no uncertain terms. Our deep concern over the measures proposed uh, by the People's Republic of China in regards to Hong Kong. We stand with the people in Hong Kong. Who it's really nice that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was expressing deep concern that the rulers in Beijing are snuffing out democracy in Hong Kong. But shouldn't it be a little bit more than deep concern, maybe a condemnation? Unfortunately, the Trudeau government is not into condemning China on anything, whether it be the handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, the arrest, detention, kidnapping, essentially, of two Canadians, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, or their ongoing warfare against Canada's economy. Justin Trudeau is so intent on getting his United Nations temporary security seat that he won't dare do anything that might ruffle the feathers in Beijing. And so we put out statements time and again that say we have, we have deep concern about China imposing a new national security law on the people of Hong Kong. Under an international agreement signed between Britain and China to return Hong Kong to Chinese hands that took effect in 1997, Hong Kong is supposed to maintain a form of autonomy, at least for 50 years. And that's not happening now. The people of Hong Kong have been rejecting these uh, attempts to impose direct rule from Beijing, to impose laws such as making an offense to insult the Chinese national anthem, to impose Beijing's type security laws. And in so, Beijing has done it unilaterally. Conservative leader Andrew Scheer was quizzing the Prime Minister about this in the House of Commons the other day, demanding that well, Trudeau do more in the name of Canada. Why is it so hard for this Prime Minister to condemn the actions of the Communist government in China? This, gov this Prime Minister has let Canada get bullied and pushed around on the world stage. Two Canadians are being held illegally. The government of China put blocks on Canadian exports. All the while, this Prime Minister has done nothing. And now the PRC is violating the one China, two systems policy and violating the rights and freedoms of the people of Hong Kong. Why is it so hard? What is he so afraid of to stand up to the PRC? Why does he continue with a policy of appeasement? You would think that that should be something easy for any prime minister that wants to stand up for liberty, democracy, a liberal democracy in the middle of China. But no, Justin Trudeau could not do it instead. He talked more about, well, concern and what he does for Canada and Canadians. My job as, can I, can, as Prime Minister is to stand up for Canadians, is to be there uh, to defend the rights of Canadians and protect Canadians both at home and abroad. That is why we have been unequivocal in our defence of the two Michaels arbitrarily detained in China. We've continued to work uh, to resolve that situation. We will continue to stand up uh, for the Canadians' rights, for Canadian interests, including agricultural producers and exporters. We will continue to defend Canadian interests everywhere around the world, including with China. How's that working out for Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor? Hasn't worked out at all, and it won't because all China wants with those two men is for Canada to release Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou. And unless that happens, the two Michaels aren't going anywhere. China wants Canada to make its justice system as corrupt as theirs. So much for the tens of millions of dollars we have spent over the last decade or two training Chinese judges and lawyers in following the rule of law Canadian style. It hasn't helped. That was money out the window. And in the meantime, what did Justin Trudeau do after the two Michaels were kidnapped? He sent them a check for more than $250 billion for the a uh, Asian Infrastructure Bank, a Beijing rule run bank that builds infrastructure in China and other parts of Asia. That's not standing up for Canadians. So Justin Trudeau has not stood up for Canadians when it comes to kidnappings and their economic warfare. And he isn't standing up now for the people of Hong Kong. By the way, more than 300,000 Canadians live in Hong Kong. There's a large expat community there, just like there is a large community of people from Hong Kong living now in Canada. We have a long, deep connection between Hong Kong and Canada, though you wouldn't know it based on the reaction of the Trudeau government. Instead, what you're seeing is what they really want, a long, deep connection with the dictators in Beijing, all the better for Trudeau to get his UN Security Council seat.